everybody to talk with a Jenny. And in this lure review, I'll be reviewing the Chase Bait Frill Seeker. Let's check it out. Cowboy to Johnny here, man. This is what we came here for. Look at that. Get back here. Look at that right there. That's the kind of beast that we came here for. Everybody, stop water, Johnny. Look at that beast right there, baby. I think I won the tournament with that one right there. I am the one with this one. Hey, everybody, it's Top Water Johnny here. Want to welcome you to my next video here. In this video, we'll be doing a review of the Chase Bait Frill Seeker Wake Bait Lizard Lure. Now, I want to show this to you real quick here so that you can get a look at this thing right here. As you can see, I want to make sure you can see it right there. Make sure that you can actually see it up close here. This actual Wake Bait Lizard Lure here. And what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to do first a closer look. So you're going to get a closer look at it. I'm going to give you some my in-depth look and study of it. Then we're going to come back. I'm going to give you my thoughts about it, where I think it works, how I think it's useful. And then finally, we're going to take it out on the water, and I'm going to do some testing of it as well so that you have an opportunity to really see it in action and where it applies. So let's go ahead and get started with our deeper look at the Chase Bait Frill Seeker Lure. All right. All right, let's take a closer look at the frill seeker. First, as you can see right here, it is actually, let me get the measurements right. It is actually total in length. It's actually seven inches long in total length. It is, as you can see here, got several joints to it right here, jointed baits. So it's actually jointed in these three spots right here. It has, as you can see right here, two really big, stout treble hooks here and as you can see right here it has that cupped bill in the front of it right there which allows for it to dive down which makes it more like a wake bait than just a pure topwater lure so this lure in itself is a very unique lure and how it's designed and created it's even got a piece on the end right here that allows even the tail to have jointed action as well and as you can see chase bait has a great design here for this actual lure this is kind of a gecko lure design so the design is really great it's got the frills in the front of it hence i guess that's the frill seeker concept behind it it is got a light colored bottom on the bottom of it right here and as i pointed out it's all jointed so it has multiple joints so that gives it a lot of action and a lot of precision when moving across the water. What we'll do now is jump back and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right. Hey, we're back. Well, I hope you enjoyed that closer look. What I want to do is I want to talk to you for a moment here about this particular lure here, this chase bait frill seeker right here. And one of the things that I want to share with you is just some of the dimensions here really quick at first. First of all, it's measured at seven inches long. It's a half ounce. It's a wake bait. And then finally, also, it is, it runs about a foot deep in the water. So it'll go down about a foot deep in the water column. So I just wanted to kind of give you those overall dimensions. Also, the investment or price of this type of lure, according to Tackle Warehouse, is running about $17.99. That's like before tax and everything like that. So I wanted to kind of give you the overall specs of it, but also this. I want you to understand that this particular lure is not a gimmick lure at all. A lot of times when these lures come out, people think that there might be a gimmick to them. In other words, it caught the fisherman but doesn't catch fish. Well, I'm here to tell you that this lure definitely will catch fish, but there's things that have to be in place to improve your odds of catching those fish. See, I live in Florida. And we have what are called geckos, these little bitty green gecko lizards. And these little lizards live by the water. They live by the water. They're also on land and they run around. So bass are exposed to these type of animals. 
And so because they're exposed to them, a bass is open to striking at a lizard. And wherever you are right now, you have to ask yourself, do we have prey items that most reflect this type of lure? And so this lure could reflect in the water. It could reflect a mouse. It could reflect a lizard. Or even because of how its dimensions are, it could reflect a snake. So what you have to do is think about where you fish at right now and say, do we have any kind of little animals that would scurry across the water? If you do, then this could be a great lure to fish with. Also, one of the other things about this, this lure really excels in calm water. So the water has to be flat. When it's truly flat, then the, this lure makes its own ripples. So if you've got this lure out there, you want to have it out there on a calm day or early in the morning or late in the evening time. Now it does have its own little rattles inside of there as well. So it does make some noise, but I would be fishing it in those kind of environments. I put some notes here also that I want to think about. Also, here's some other things I want to keep in mind is that when you fish this, it's not about fishing it in open water. It's about fishing it near cover. Because if you're fishing it like a little animal that would be getting in the water, you want to fish it where there is cover, where the bass can ambush, but you want to fish it where you can throw your lure near that cover as if that animal was jumping in the water, which is your lure. So you want to fish near cover with this type of lure. In the video that you're going to watch me fish with, it's going to be a little bit longer because what I'm doing is I'm showing you spots and locations on the water where you can actually fish this lure and be really effective. So this is almost like a little training top water fishing video here where I'm going to point out specific locations on the water where you have the greatest opportunity to have success with this lure. Also, if you're a pond fisherman, it could probably work in a pond as well because the bass and ponds are more hyper aggressive because of whatever gets near that water they're going to probably go strike at. But if you're fishing where there's a lot of pressure, then you want to always be trying to fish with lures that most reflect what those bass are eating on. A lot of people will be fishing with different lures, but you want to have things that they're eating on and striking at. And this lure right here is definitely one of those kind of lures that a bass would be striking at. Also, if you decide to get this lure in the box, it comes with not just this tail, but it comes with a second tail as well. So you're going to get two tails when you buy this one right here. So I would definitely say if you've got prey items that most reflect a mouse, a lizard, a snake, or any other kind of little animal that would scurry across the water, that this type of lure would be a good lure to have in your tackle box. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take you on out on the water and kind of show you how I look and break down a lake when I'm trying to use this particular type of lure. Please, before I go, please like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And just remember that phrase, as I always say, keep your line tight because when they hit those top water lures, it's going to be a big bite. Enjoy the rest of the video. All right. Hey everybody, it's Topwater Johnny, and we are at the lake now, and we are going to test out the Chase Baits Frill Seeker lure. It's the lizard lure. We're going to test it out here. And I wanted to go somewhere where this type of lure would have, would really be more conducive. So I want to show everybody something real quick here. Just look out there. Just want you to see out there how calm the water is, how calm the water is. See where the vegetation is. See where the vegetation is and see how calm that actual water is. So I wanted to show you that so that you could kind of get an idea of what I was talking about when I was doing my description and briefing about how the water has to be calm, how there has to be vegetation so that there are lizards and animals that would be near the water be able to, so the bass could have a chance at them. So I wanted to just kind of show you that so that you would kind of see what I was talking about where you want to put this kind of lure in environments where the possibility for a lizard to be, to fall into the water, to swim is possible. And also it has to be where bass would typically be looking for those type of um, prey items. So I just wanted to kind of give you that little insight and we're gonna go ahead and get started now. All right, let's go ahead and get started. 
Throw it out here by this little bit of this cover. I'm gonna let it stay calm, let the water dissipate, because remember the water, actually there's no current out here, there's no waves. And then just kind of bring it back in near where vegetation is. And it's got a good waving action here because it does have a lip on it there. So as, it, as you see it coming in here, it has a, that tail is giving a lot of action in the back there. So it's definitely snaking along. Let's see here, see if you guys can see that. As you can see it right there, and it has that, that snake, it's got that snaking action right there. Do it out here again. As you can see, it's got that snaking action there with the tail, and it moves right to left if you pop it. So right to left, if you pop it, when you throw it out there, you know, it definitely, it won't sink, but it kind of has tail up a little bit because of that bill on it, you know, that little piece on there. So this is a wake bait. So it's going to make a lot of movement on top of the water and running across there. As you can see, like it's just like a, it's got excellent action as far as being a little lizard. It's got great action. Throw it back out here. And what I'm trying to do, because it has, it has hooks on it. It has treble hooks. So I'm trying not to get it snagged up in the vegetation. But I am trying to throw near the vegetation. Hoping that some bass will see that as they go, as it's going by. So, like as you can see over here, there's vegetation in between there. Bring it out there. I'm gonna let it sit, and then try to bring it through there. Because that's typically where. That's typically where, if there was a lizard swimming, they would be. They'd be in that little area right there. All right, we're in another spot here, as you can see. I'm trying to go where there's cover at, where I think a lizard would actually, where a lizard would actually be. Put it there. As you can see, it's out there. And I'm trying to run it along the edges so that if there's anything hunting they could go after it all right all right so that was one spot and like I said it's got great movement great action it definitely that tail is really moving a lot so as far as a lure that has great action, this lure definitely has great action. It's a jointed lure, as I probably already discussed. It's a, it's a jointed lure, and it's got treble hooks on it. But this little bill right here, that little bill right there makes it have, makes it dive a little bit like a wake bait. But it definitely gives it a lot of action. So we're gonna go to another spot here and test it out okay here we are on the other side of this bush throw it back out there again let it sit I always tend to like to give my stuff a pop right when it right after it lands unless it you know, and the rings go away I like to give it a little pop just in case something was watching it when it landed and didn't know really what it was. So I like to do that. It's got a, that tail is really moving back there. Really good action there. Okay, as you can see down this weed line here, what we're gonna do, cause I already tried over here by the bushes. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna go down this weed line here. I'm gonna try to run it along there as best I can and see if there's anything along this weed line here. Try that weed line. Okay. 
Uh, I think the key, like I said before, is to real fast, not real fast, but real fast enough to get it back up on the surface so that you can run it right across, nice and easy, right across that weed line where, where those actual, where lizard might be at. So, get one more time here for you guys. Looking straight ahead, here's another good spot. There might be something right here. You never know. Throw it right there. Let it sit. Well, there's a turtle there. I can see the turtle. I don't see nothing else at the moment. The turtle's brave. He didn't even move. So nothing was in that spot, but that was another good spot right there. So there you have it. A little review of the chase bait put it up here there you have it there's a review of the chase bait frill seeker all right everybody's talking with a johnny here and i hope you enjoyed this video this was a review of the chase bait frill seeker and one thing that i'll say about it is that if you're going to fish with this lure and this lure as i mentioned before is not a gimmick lure this is a really good lure and it's high quality from chase bait so i had to give them all the props and plug for that right there but this is a specialty type of lure. So what, the reason I took you to this particular lake here is because I wanted to show you in an environment where this type of lure could excel. Notice how the water is very calm out here. Notice, as before, there is vegetation along the edges right here. Notice that there are certain things that have to be around to make a lure like this work. And it also prey. In other words, you have to be somewhere where there are lizards and mice and, and spiders or snakes or something that can scurry into the water so that the bass have an opportunity to key on it. So this is one of those times where you really have to think about where you're fishing at. And as I always talk about matching the hatch, if the bass are chasing lizards, like I live in Florida, so we have these little gecko lizards that's already mentioned. They're everywhere. So there's a chance that a bass will hit that because they're used to seeing them. They're used to seeing them near the water. They're used to seeing them swimming. And so that's a prey item. And that's what I want you to think about is if you're going to get this lure, think about where could I fish it at where the bass would be used to seeing kind of, item, kind of like prey come from the land into the water and start to swim. Think about that for a moment. That's the key to really making this lure work. So once again, I just wanted to tell everybody, welcome to the channel for those that are here with me for the first time and those that have been with me. As always, I appreciate you being here with me. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so that you're notified when I release my next videos. Now, always remember that phrase, keep your line tight because when they hit those top water lures, it's going to be a big bite. All right.